Kazan is the capital of the Republic of Tatarstan. The city is located in the Volga Federal District, on the left bank of the Volga River, at the confluence of the Kazanka River. Kazan is one of the largest economic, religious, cultural and sports centers in Russia. The area of the city is 589 square kilometers. The population is 1,259,000 people. In the 2005th year Kazan celebrated its millennium. This city, located at the bustling commercial crossroads of east and west, has a rich history, and it is reflected in its many attractions. Two ancient cultures are intertwined in Kazan and two religions, Christian and Muslim, peacefully coexist. There are a large number of mosques and Orthodox churches in the city, there is also a Catholic church and a synagogue. Tatarstan has two official languages, Tatar and Russian. In some villages, they speak only Tatar, and in others, Russian. Almost all signs in the city are written in two languages, and in tourist places, in three, including English. In the 2009th year, Kazan officially registered the brand third capital of Russia in Rospatent. Nizhny Novgorod claimed the same title, but Kazan applied earlier. The city has repeatedly hosted high-level international competitions in various sports. In the 2013th year, the World Summer Universiade was held here, in the 2015th, the World Aquatics Championship, and in the 2018th, several matches of the World Football Championship. A huge number of roads, interchanges, sports facilities were built for the Universiade and the airport was reconstructed. The center of Kazan has also changed. There were many dilapidated old buildings in the historical quarter of the city. To restore them, the city authorities began to put buildings up for auction with a starting price of 1 ruble. The condition of the deal was a complete reconstruction with the preservation of the building style. Commercial companies bought most of the buildings, restored them and placed their offices in them. Kazan is one of the centers of development of the Russian IT industry. There is even a Skalkovo analog here. It is a satellite city of Annapolis. A very interesting and unusual place. By the way, there will be a separate video about him. The climate in Kazan is moderately continental. Summer is hot and dry, the average temperature is plus 24 degrees. Winter is cold and snowy, the average temperature is minus 13 degrees. In terms of popularity among tourists in the capital of Tatarstan, it ranks fourth out of all Russian cities. In the 2019th year, it was visited by almost three and a half million people. Let's see what is so interesting in Kazan and why so many tourists come here. The main value of Kazan and, of course, the number one attraction is the Kazan Kremlin, located in the heart of the city. The towers and walls of the Kremlin saw the Bulgarian princes, the soldiers of Genghis Khan and Ivan the Terrible himself. The exact date of construction of the Kazan Kremlin is unknown, but researchers believe that the complex appeared between the 10th and 12th centuries. The Kazan Kremlin is included in the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Entrance to the Kremlin is free. The main attractions are the Kul Sharif Mosque, the Annunciation Cathedral, the Siambik Tower and the Spaskaya Tower. The residence of the President of Tatarstan is also located on the territory of the Kremlin. Kulsharif Mosque is the main cathedral mosque of the Republic of Tatarstan and the city of Kazan. It is called the Pearl of the Kremlin. But the real attraction was destroyed in the time of Ivan the Terrible. It was decided to build a new one on the site of the disappeared medieval shrine. In the 2005th year, for the millennial anniversary of the city, the new mosque was inaugurated. The Kul Sharif Mosque has eight minarets decorated with crescents. Inside the mosque there is a museum of Islam and ancient manuscripts, a prayer hall, a library, and a viewing platform. Annunciation Cathedral, an Orthodox church and a monument of Russian architecture of the 16th century. The Annunciation Cathedral is the most remote example of the Pskov architectural school and the oldest surviving architectural monuments in the ensemble of the Kremlin and the city. It is believed that Ivan the Terrible himself drove a wooden cross in place for the construction of this temple. The temple became the first Orthodox cathedral in the Middle Volga region. The Siambik Tower, Travel Watchtower. It was built in the 17th century, but the calculations turned out to be incorrect and immediately after construction, the structure gradually began to tilt. The deviation of its spire from the vertical is almost 2 meters. The total height of the tower is 58 meters. The Spaskaya Tower is the main entrance to the Kazan Kremlin. The four-tiered tower got its name from the icon of the savior not made with hands, which was located above its gates. It was erected in the 16th century by Pskov architects Ivan Shiryai and Postnik Yakovlev. The tower has been rebuilt several times. In all ages, as the main Kremlin Tower, special attention has been paid to it. There are also several museums on the territory of the Kremlin. Hermitage, Kazan, the Museum of Islamic Culture, 
the Museum of Natural History of Tatarstan, the Museum of the History of the Annunciation Cathedral and the Museum of the Cannon Yard. From the territory of the Kazan Kremlin, you can enjoy stunning views of the city and the Kazanka River. Balman Street is the main pedestrian street in the historical center of Kazan. It starts from Millennium Square near the Kazan Kremlin and continues to Tikaya Square. Balman Street is called the local Arbat. Crowded at any time of the year, it is one of the main city attractions visited by tourists. Balman Street is one of the oldest streets in Kazan. In the era of the Kazan Khanate, it was called the Nogai Road. It was beautifully landscaped and decorated in the early 90s, and it became the first pedestrian zone in the city in 1996. Balman Street is a shopping and entertainment district. There are many shops, cafes, restaurants, as well as monuments and fountains, including a monument to the famous Kazan cat. What is the cat famous for? One day, the Russian Empress Elizabeth Petrovna found out that there were no mice in Kazan. At that time in Kazan there was a special breed of fighting cats, mousers. These cats were strong, active animals with a large head, a muscular neck and a short tail. By order of the Empress, 30 Kazan cats were transported to St. Petersburg to catch mice bred in the unfinished Winter Palace. Determined for the sovereign service and special allowance, the cats did their job and freed the Winter Palace from rodents, thereby glorifying their breed throughout Russia. The most noticeable impressive object on Bauman Street is the bell tower of the Epiphany Cathedral. It is the tallest historical building in the city. Its height is 74 meters. The Epiphany Cathedral itself is located next to the bell tower. Also on Bauman Street is St. Nicholas Cathedral. In general, there are an incredible number of temples and mosques in Kazan, especially in the central part of the city. Literally on every street you will find either a temple or a mosque. I have not seen such a concentration of religious sites in any other city in Russia. And it is precisely this neighborhood of two religions that Kazan stands out vividly against the background of other cities. The Kazan Family Center is the main wedding palace in Kazan and an iconic landmark of the city. Future spouses come to this unique registry office to tie the knot of their lives and destinies. The building has a very original architecture and resembles a cauldron, a traditional Asian cast cauldron over a blazing fire. Inside there are three wedding halls golden, silver and oriental, three elevators and a staircase leading to the observation deck, which is located at the very top at a height of 32 meters. The observation deck offers a beautiful view of the Kazan Kremlin, the Kremlin embankment and the river. The cauldron was opened in the 2013 year. It is located on a bulk, almost circular peninsula on the right bank of the Kazanka River. The Tatar State Puppet Theater Ikiat is the largest and one of the oldest puppet theaters in Russia. The name of the theater is formed from the Tatar word Ikiat, which means a fairy tale. The theater building is very beautiful and spectacular and its original architecture really resembles a magic palace from a fairy tale. The building is not only a theater, there is also a children's center, which includes a children's art school, a children's art school, a creative development studio and a children's cafe. Opposite the theater there is a large children's park with many interesting locations. The theater is located in the city center on St. Petersburg Street. In general, Kazan is a very convenient city for tourists. Most of the attractions are located in the center, which significantly saves time on their visit and inspection. Cabin Lake Embankment, a very interesting and modern solution. In the 2015 year, the Kazan City Hall announced an international competition for the best concept of radical reconstruction and development of the embankment. The winner was the Russian-Chinese consortium with the Elastic Band project. The circular elastic band was supposed to create a continuous landscape around the water and unite the green area. A related uncultured tape combined the Kamala Theater, the historical building of the old Tatar settlement, the Kazan Zoo Botanic Garden, the Mushroom Sports Center and other facilities of the embankment into a single walking and walking route. A few steps from the embankment is the Tatar State Academic Theater Kamala. For more than a hundred years, the theater has been supporting and promoting Tatar drama to the masses. 
The performances are in the Tatar language with simultaneous translation. Not far from the embankment is the old Tatar Sloboda. This is an ensemble of ancient buildings of the 17th and 19th centuries, built in a unique Tatar style. Wooden residential buildings, shopping malls, stone merchant mansions, beautiful mosques are a colorful place where you immerse yourself in the leisurely atmosphere of a bygone era. In the settlement you can buy souvenirs, national costumes and taste delicious and hearty Tatar cuisine. There is also the Marjani Mosque, built in 1770. She became the embodiment of the Society of Multiconfessional Religious Tolerance in Russia, proclaimed by Empress Catherine II at the end of the 18th century. The Kremlin embankment is something incredible and amazing. I never could have thought that the embankment could be so wide, comfortable, beautiful and so competently designed. There is so much space and expanse that it seems the entire population of Kazan can fit on this one embankment. The embankment with a walking area along the left bank of the Kazanka River has existed for a long time, but with the appearance of the palace square under the walls of the Kremlin, the building of the Palace of Farmers and the elite residential complex Palace Embankment, the Kazan administration decided to improve the shoreline and turn it into something much more interesting. The coastline was expanded and landscaped. By the Universiate of the 2013th year, the first stage was commissioned, and in the summer of the 2015th year, the grand opening of a full-fledged embankment took place. The walking area includes two paths for walking, one along the shore, the other under the frame connecting gazebos and pavilions, and a wide strip for roller skating, bicycles, scooters and other wheeled. There are many different restaurants, cafes and bars on the embankment in the pavilions. There are also rides, fountains, gazebos, benches or tents for the most tired. At the beginning of the embankment there is a sports ground and a pier, pier. Next to the embankment there is another attraction of Kazan, the creator of farmers. This building, more like a luxurious European theater or museum, was built in the 2010th year and it has become one of the symbols of the new Kazan. The Palace of Farmers is so named because the Ministry of Agriculture and Food of the Republic of Tatarstan and its subordinate services are located inside it. The palace looks especially impressive in the dark, when the backlight is turned on. The central element of the building is a tree 20 meters high. It is made of bronze. Its green illumination symbolizes foliage. At the end of the Kremlin embankment stretches the famous Millennium Bridge. It bears the title of the highest bridge in Kazan. The 45-meter letter M, towering over the bridge, symbolizes the millennium of the city. Some citizens make fun of the fact that the letter M towering over the bridge does not symbolize the millennium of Kazan, but the first letter of the name of the former president of Tatarstan Mintimer Shemiv, and since 2000 the first letter of the surname of his successor, Rustam Minikhanov. The length of the bridge is one and a half kilometers. The structure is designed for both car traffic and pedestrians. It consists of six lanes and two isolated sidewalks. Thanks to the beautiful lighting, the bridge looks the most spectacular at night. From the bridge there is a view of the new Akbar's Arena Stadium, built in the 2013th year. The stadium is the home arena of the Kazan Football Club Rubin. He was awarded the highest fourth category of UEFA. The architectural concept of the structure in the shape of a water lily was developed by an American company, whose track record includes the world-famous stadiums at Amberley and Amy Reitz in London. Being in Kazan, you definitely need to try Echpochmak and Chakchak. These two dishes are built into a real cult here. There is even a monument to Echpochmak. Kazan is really a very pleasant city for tourism. Well-groomed and clean, in no way inferior to European cities. There are many places for recreation and leisure, theaters, museums, sports complexes, cafes and restaurants. Lovers of outdoor recreation can go to the Kwebyshev Reservoir. At this point, the Kama River overflows for 40 kilometers. Locals call this place the Kama Sea and come here to sunbathe and swim. There are also many different resorts and recreation centers near Kazan. The places here are very beautiful. The Volga alone is worth something.